Hello folks, I'm Jeffrey Fox and I'm the instructor of this course on AI First Engineering. And it's going to um, go through uh, large scale real world applications and uh, try to understand how AI is used and what the technical implications of that are. And I have the prejudice that uh, deep learning is the most important um, component of this uh, revolution of doing AI. There's other aspects of AI, but uh, if you look at the most of the areas, it's deep learning that's making the real difference. Okay, <clears throat> so for the next um, few years, we're going to see many industries change. And um, these changes, and when people maybe are always saying this, but in my impression is these changes are s at least going faster than in previous years. Maybe the Industrial Revolution was a more, even more profound change, but it took a long time. This change, because it's all based on software, and is, is likely to be much quicker. And if we look at the industry changes in industry, uh, they can have, um, it sort of has three components. There is the core technology, the machine learning, the computer science, the systems, cloud computing and things. There are totally new industries, um, like, I don't know, the uh, Netflix industry, um, digital media. Um, and then there are traditional industries transformed, which sometimes mean they morph into new industries. Um, and we will try to look at all of these. We will make a list then later on in this introduction. And as sort of a background to this, this course, um, there are gonna be two things that are used continuously, uh, though we won't really make this a course on either of them. One is cloud computing, because that's where all the a lot of the software is run, although not all of it is run on the cloud. When your um, when your um, self-driving car is approached to high speed by a large semi truck, it is not going to use cloud computing to decide how to escape. It will use its onboard computer, the so-called FOG, the local computing helping that car, and the other as well as the computing infrastructure, which is the uh, in computer science is called systems, um, or distributed systems, or parallel computing. And there is the deep learning, which is the uh, technology of machine learning, which is the most profound in terms of its uh, ability to really develop amazing new algorithms. And so if you're gonna be in these areas, you're going to have to be in dialogue engaged in the enterprise that understands deep learning and cloud computing. You don't have to actually know either of them yourself. You need to be part of a team, however, that does. <coughs> if you, I listed here some um, older resources um, from a class called E534. There is a, an overview of the transformation of the state of the internet and things like that. There is a resource on cloud computing, and there is also a cloud computing class that uh, Gregor von Leszewski uh, teaches, which is useful. And then we have uh, an older version of our discussion of deep learning and applications, and uh, we will be updating that and giving you new videos as needed during this session. Um, well, here is just, um, and why I use the word AI first. Uh, this actually was an old um, compilation I did in 2017, almost now a couple of years ago, um, where, over a couple of years ago actually, where it basically highlighted the fact that companies were reorienting themselves around AI. And um, here, these are just web page headlines. Notice that not only companies like Google, and Facebook and Twitter and Apple are uh, doing AI. Um, the hardware people like Intel, because Intel has to sell its hardware to drive AI. So for, there are 
all companies in this area need to understand AI. And uh, one way we will notice that um, transformation happens is you don't transform yourself inside, you transform yourself by buying a startup. Well, Google, for instance, brought DeepMind. It also had a, had a lot of good people internally. These are the actual headlines. Google, Facebook, and Microsoft remaking themselves around AI. Uh, Google, the full stack AI company. Bezos, the head of Amazon, says AI to fuel Amazon's success. Uh, the Microsoft says that AI is the ultimate breakthrough. Tesla says that AI will help its cars teach themselves. Netflix is, uses AI to do its recommender engines to tell you what to watch. And it is that and also the AI can optimize the delivery of the streaming of the um, of the movies by doing the optimizing the networking. And here we have not AI first, but machine learning first, which is essentially the same idea. And here's General Electric, which is a company that has to be transformed. It says it has a significant emphasis on software and machine learning in its current manifestation. Um, so here is some of the, um, I, I, I got these three, uh, three um, areas. So here's the first area, core technologies. Um, so we have big data, cloud computing and the software engineering there are edge computing. The fact that we're now building lots of devices, those devices take the data. Uh, like Amazon Alexa is an edge computing device. It currently uses the cloud to interpret your voice, but it will eventually, or actually quite soon, do most of that itself. Um, the network has to be transformed to support AI. There is the Apache Big Data Stack, the huge reservoir of open source software. There is the uh, pictures of Amazon using robots to, to, man, to, to uh, uh, run its uh, one day delivery warehouses. So that's AI is going to do the logistics, where to, where to put what of the merchandise to maximize the chance of delivering on time. Uh, there's a b bunch of uh, new developments in the area of virtual reality and augmented reality. Those are closely connected with AI, to, uh, especially when you combine them with gaming and things like that. Then we have deep learning itself, which has things like convolutional neural nets for images, uh, sequence to sequence transformations for uh, speech and other um, processing of series, things which are chopped up in time or in other some other dimension, like a, a genomic sequence. And so, and then deep learning also has got various other things it can do. And then we have, um, some new industries which have um, come growing over the last few years. There's the internet itself, there's social media and collaboration, there's search, there is cybersecurity, which is so hot, uh, smart homes and cities, and robotics. These are sort of things that didn't really exist uh, 25 years ago. Here we have traditional industries which is changing, computing. Becoming clouds plus edge plus fog. We will start off by looking at transportation, where we will see a dramatic changes as the transportation industry and the automobile industry and the taxi industry turn into the mobility industry. Um, and of course, it has some implications for space and things like that. We have e commerce, the tremendous success of Amazon and Alibaba and related stores. Manufacturing, where we have um, smart machines, we have a growing use of digital twins to simulate what you manufacture and understand from the computer model what's, what to expect. Agricultural and food have a substantial involvement with AI. You have drones flying over, discovering where your crops are growing or not growing. And um, we have um, Websites like Expedia and or concepts like Airbnb, which are revolutionizing the travel and hospitality industry. 
there's there are lots of technology to optimize the buying of homes. And of course, both room hailing is Airbnb. Then we have Bitcoin, um, real time stock market things, insurance support, trying to find you the best, trying to find the premium which are appropriate for a particular insurance. So banking and financial technology has tens of billions of dollars are going into it to try to revolutionize that industry, which is both digitized. Sometimes there is in this AI first a mix of both basic digitization and AI exploiting the digitization. And of course, the digitization, if when I taught a course on big data starting in 2013 or 2012, that focused on the digitization. It had and we did do AI even then, but not it was not as dramatic as it is now. Health is very important, although it's actually the few which has probably made the least progress, even though it's possibly the most important. I think it's because it's so hard to get the data and it's so wrapped up in, in privacy issues. So we have one area which has made huge strides is pathology, interpreting of cancer images and related images, and their deep learning has had huge impact. Uh, we have personalized health, including genomics. Uh, where again, it's more traditional machine learning is currently uh, most important. And then we have things like remote surgery. And also actually um, related to remote surgery, just telehealth. Um, health at a distance, particularly important in some application areas like rural areas. We have the area of surveillance and monitoring, which includes military applications, civilian disaster response. I put here just, um, I noted a recent review of the military situation. Um, energy, energy is transforming as we try to strive for a greener future with solar, wind, and oil. Science itself, some research. We, science has always been based on data, and that data now can be better analyzed with deep learning and other machine learning capabilities. Sports. Well, we know we, there's this field called sabermetrics, which is the baseball study of baseball statistics. Well, that can now be dramatically enhanced, including analysis of videos, um, and, and also by looking at the performance of particular players against each other. So you can do a much more sophisticated job of finding the best matchups to try to maximize your chance of winning a game. Then at the bottom, we have the whole information area. News, advertising, or actually fake news, politics, education. And um, this is a huge area, which is very, very um, you know, popularized. And finally, we have what's most interesting probably for the students, jobs. Jobs are changing. And job actually finding jobs can be supported using recommender engines for, and which can probably be done best using deep learning. You can match employers to employees in a better fashion. So, at the moment, technology is unusually important in the in the new revolution, and. Um, it's sort of interesting to see why it also affects the technology itself, because this new AI technology, this AI technology, it's being used in mass market applications. So the very latest in technology has been used for advertising, that's sort of slightly depressing. It's being used for ride hailing, it's being used for search. And all of the, and they use these, Applications which are going to everybody means they have a lot of money attached to them. Because if something has got seven billion customers, well, you don't have to spend much money per customer to make it very important. So now, unlike the past, and say when I was doing parallel computing 35 years ago, there wasn't so much money in that because the applications of parallel computing were not consumer centric. They were industry centric, like uh, Say General Motors in those days was using parallel computing to help simulate its cars, the early versions of digital twins. 
But now this AI is right at the front line. Every time you call your Uber driver, AI kicks in to optimize the mapping between you and the, and the possible drivers. And uh, so that's what it says here. And this means there's huge investment in core technology. Plus you have to put that investment in because the best service requires the best AI and that the people, the customer, the companies that deliver the best service are the ones that will actually get the most customers and therefore make the most money. And in some sense, these are fights to the death because the, if somebody just opts out and says, "Well, we've done enough and there's AI trash," let's let's go and spend our money on something more useful, uh, they will unfortunately go out of business. And now for the final slide, um, which sort of Summarizes the course, depending on the students, uh, we will vary the amount and the depth of the artificial intelligence. When we want to do computing, we'll use the, uh, a, a cloud, which is called the Google CoLab. Um, and uh, we could ch change the emphasis. This particular course will have more emphasis on applications and less emphasis on the clouds and deep learning, because that fits the students better. Students can uh, choose their industry, and if the early students did that, you can work individually or in teams, and um, we can make ourselves a choice whether to survey all industries or some industries in depth. And uh, as we're seeing here, I will try to record my presentations and focus the actual in-person classes on discussion. And we will move to one class a week. Although that class will not always be on the same day, because I have travel constraints, which means it's not possible for me to um, always be here on a Thursday or always be here on a Tuesday. All right, so let's get going. AI first engineering, this will change your life. Thank you.